Hello FTC teams, this is Team 6929 Data Force. In this video, we'll be showing you how to switch your motor wires to Interson power pole connectors. As you may know, with the new technology, you have to add Interson power pole connectors. As you can see here with the new motor controller, there's uh, Interson power pole connectors here instead of just regular holes with like the high technic wires. With the old motor wires, you'd have these, you have just the metal exposing. But now, with the new the motor controllers, we'll have to add all these Anderson power pole connectors as you can see here. With the Anderson power pole wires, they're much more reliable, plus they're easy to connect. As you can see here, I'll just show you right here. Just like that. They have a very good connection compared to just screwing in uh, wires into uh, the old technology. So, what we'll be showing you is how to add these interesting power poles, these little guys here. What we'll be doing first is tinning the wire, the wire with a solder, just so the, the coils all stay together very nicely. And then we'll be adding this metal part right here onto the wire, and we'll be crimping it and adding this on top of it. You may also, if you, if you feel very uh, comfortable with doing it, you may also want to switch your battery connectors, with this Tamiya cable, to the Interstate Power Pole connectors because they're also very more, much more reliable than these Tamiya cables. We'll be showing you that in, the, in our next video. So before we usually clip crimp our uh, Interstate Power Pole on our wire, we usually tin the wire just a little bit. This allows the coils, the wire, to come together nicely. Uh, as you can see here, we have a bad example. This is a bad example of tinning. You do not want the plastic to melt into the wire. When that happens, the electricity flowing through the wire doesn't conduct as well because the plastic blocks the electricity going through. So you want to make sure when you're uh, so the soldering gun or whatever tool you're using is further down the wire or towards the tip, not towards the plastic, so it doesn't melt as easily. So before we uh, tin our wire, we got we're going to strip our wire here. One end already has the uh, interstate power pole on, other does not. And that's the wire, uh, side we're going to be using. This tool we're using to strip the wire is an automatic stripper. It's very nice and easy tool to use to get the right amount of plastic off. This will also be in the link in the description. And once you've done uh, stripping the wire, what you want to do is twist all the coils together so that way they don't separate while you're tinning. Once you've done that, See how they're all, all nicely coiled together. Side. And when this tool here is called the helping hands. The helping hands just allows you to, it just holds the wire for you. It's really nice actually, uh, so you don't have to hold three things at once. So when you put the wire on the helping hands, you just want to make sure uh, it's facing downward, or if you're just using your hand in general. You just want to make sure it's facing down so that way the uh, solder that you're using doesn't go back into the plastic because that will also cause the plastic to melt. You want it to go downward. So tighten this here. All right. All right, so I got my soldering gun here. Usually, what we do before we uh, solder is just run the solder about it. Just to get the just a little bit of the solder into the gun. All right, just just a little bit. You don't need a whole lot. And you can just get all the extra stuff off. This is and this is a brass brush. All right. So uh, when you have your uh, heat gun, you want to first heat up the wire. Just, just for about 10 seconds. So we'll go just make sure it's towards the tip of the wire, not towards the plastic. I'll we'll bring our solder in and move the solder around. And move the solder away first and then the gun. Let this cool down for a minute before we do the other side. So I have the other side now, and we'll do the same thing. Hold it for 10 seconds. Bring the solder. 
and let it go. And we'll let it cool down here before we uh, crimp it. All right, so after your wires cool down, uh, we'll start our crimping process. Uh, so with our wire, our wire is 14 gauge wire, we're going to be using the 30 amp Anderson Power Pole set. Uh, this set uh, is for the 14 gauge and I think other wires as well. Just make sure you're the right set before you're doing this or else it'd be too big. If you have too large or too small, it might come off. Uh, so in your Anderson Power Pole pack, you'll have this metal part and this plastic part. Uh, the metal part will is the part that we'll be crimping and then after that we'll slide it through the plastic part. So this tool here is also in the link in the description. It's a tri-crimp crimper. It's a ratcheting tool that's really nice when you're crimping uh, wires. So as you can see here on the tri-crimp, there's a 15, 30, and 45. These are for the different amperages, so we're going to be using a 30 amp. And when you're putting it in, the metal part, you want to make sure that this little hook right here is facing downward. So when I put it in here, I make sure it's facing down. All right, so it's in. And we'll now put the wire in into the hole and make sure it's all the way in. No metal. Thing. And then we'll ratchet it down. Sometimes it can be hard. And once it uh, releases, that means you're done. So that's what it looks like once it's done. Maybe give it a little tug to see if it uh, comes off at all. Just to check. Alright, so now we have our metal part on and we have our plastic part. When you're putting this in, you want the hook to hook into this metal part right there. Uh, it's right there. It's a little metal bar. So when you're putting it in, notice how this part on top is larger than the part on the bottom. You want it to go in like this with the hook like that. All right, so we'll go, we'll go put it in and we'll push it in. And once you hear that click, it means it's in. You might want to test it a little bit, but it's in there pretty good. I'll be showing you to test your wire, make sure it conducts electricity well. So right here we have a multimeter and we got our two ends here. And what we're gonna do is once you have your Anderson power poles, you want to put the end of the power pole onto the metal part inside the power pole on either end. So I got one side here and the other side here. And what I want to make sure is the multimeter should go to zero. I don't know, if, I can't see it right now, but it should be zero. Um, that means it's conducting electricity or it can conduct electricity. There's no resistance in the wire. The medium duty soldering gun. We will be used in the video 100, 100 watt. This is the this is the 14 gauge wire. Red black zip code RB 14500. 50. Okay. This is the brass brush. This would wipe off the soldering, the remains of the soldering. This is the okay. This is the automatic wire stripper. Um, this you could is a CK nine five zero zero one. You could get this at www.cktools.com. This is a tri -crimp. This You can get this at powerworks.com. This is a 60-40 lead repair solder. This is the helping hands. It holds wire while, wires while soldering. This is um, this is the 
the 30 amp um, Anderson power pole. So this, the 30 amp is used for um, for batteries, and the 15 amp is used for battery charging. And this is the Centex 7 function digital multimeter with with um, with backlight.